morning, everyone. Edgar asked me to give a devotion this morning. Um, I told him that I really can't give a sermon or anything like that as such because I'm not qualified to do that and I couldn't give a theological exposition on anything. But he kindly said to me, just share from the heart. So I can do that and I hope that we can all connect on some level this morning. The other day, um, Sharon was telling me about a kid from Oakey. He's the type of kid that gets into a lot of trouble with the teachers. He's on medication for ADHD. He's been suspended a number of times from school. This kid was rejected at birth by his own mother. His mother said, I don't want that kid. Fill in the blank there. And somebody else got to look after this kid. We were talking about the challenges he faces and also the challenges that Sharon faces in having to, um, to talk to this kid. But Sharon said something that caught my attention. She said, there's nothing wrong with, I won't use his name, he just needs to make better choices or to learn how to make better choices. And I thought to myself, is that really true? Is it really true that there's nothing wrong with this kid? I mean, everybody else says that there's something wrong with him. I mean, they put him on a drug, oh, I think it's concerto or whatever that is, it's a drug like, called like Ritalin, and his behaviour indicates that he doesn't cope very well in class, and um, so, you know, everybody else thinks there's something wrong with this kid. But she says there's nothing wrong with him. Is that really true? It made me think, is that how God sees us? Does he say the same thing about us? And I suspect that most of us would say that there are things that are wrong about ourselves. Uh, Henry Thoreau said, the mass of men leaves, lead lives of quiet desperation. It's a famous quote. I don't know if it's true or not, but I do suspect there's some sort of truth in it, some sort of negative self-talk that goes on amongst most of us some of the time. We're not immune from the problems of the world and the culture that we live in always wants somebody to blame. My suspicion is that a lot of the time we take that blame on ourselves. We say things like, there must be something wrong with me. In my case, I say things like, oh, I didn't pray hard enough, or I didn't fast enough, or I didn't read my Bible enough, or I didn't stand on that scripture strong enough, or, or you know, a hundred other variations on that theme. But the question I go back to is, what does God really think about us? Or to be really truthful, what does he think about me? I think that there's something wrong with me. Jesus said, to, said, my sheep know my voice. We find that in John uh, chapter 10 verse 4. Jesus says the shepherd goes on ahead of the sheep and they follow him because they know his voice. That means that Jesus is speaking to me. So what is he saying? He, he's calling me, me by name. He's saying, Marcus, listen to what I have to say to you. I've come to lead you into green pasture, which is another way of saying that he will meet every need I have. He's promising me to give me life, but not only that, to give me abundant life. Romans 8 verse 1 tells us that there's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Now you might say, well what about the sin in my life? You know, isn't there some sort of guilt or some sort of emotion that goes with that? We were at Elijah House Prayer Ministry School yesterday, Sharon and I, and uh, one of the students there said something very interesting. She said, it's really easy to repent when the Holy Spirit is with, there, is in the midst. And my suspicion is that, you know, if you've come with things in your life and, you've, and you want to repent, but it's under a sense of condemnation, it's under a sense of shame, that somehow or other the Holy Spirit isn't there in that situation. That when the Holy Spirit is there, it's easy to repent. And so there's no condemnation. There's just a recognition that, hey, there's things that are not right in my life, but there's no guilt with it. There's no condemnation with it. We take it to the Lord and he forgives us and he restores us. So when we're constantly down on ourselves, well, that brings a little bit of death in our spirit. A little part of us dies every time we condemn ourselves. So Jesus is saying that there is nothing wrong with us. We're okay. Everything is under control. All we have to do is listen to his voice and everything will be okay. And I guess that's the challenge for us. Can we live a lifestyle that gives us room to be able to hear Jesus' voice speaking to us constantly? 
with all the distractions that we have in our modern lives, it's very easy to get a different view of who we are. There are plenty of people who tell us that we're no good. Combine that with past experiences and, you know, those dark spiritual forces, it's not hard to get on a downward spiral. But I'm sure that if we listen to the truth of what Jesus is saying to us, we'll hear him saying that there's nothing wrong with us. A lot of you will know that we went to the funeral of a young man a couple of weeks ago. And I've been trying to make sense, some sense of that his death because he died at his own hands. Some say that he was sick, some say that he was doing things wrong, some say he had the wrong crowd around him, some say he should have known better. I don't really think any of those things really explain what happened. And they're not really helpful at all, all those things. I just think that he forgot to listen to Jesus for just a moment. If we can learn anything from this tragedy, I think that it shows the importance of knowing what Jesus is actually saying to us. He's saying that he loves us, that he thinks we're okay. In fact, better than okay. He's saying that we're all his favourites, equally his favourites. So it's my prayer again this morning that we'll stay in close contact with the only person that will tell us the full truth about ourselves. And in that knowledge we find security in the realisation that Jesus thinks that we are fine, everything is under control, because he is leading us. Thank you.